This is what it feels like to be in front, huh? So for those of you who don't know, my name is Reno. And it is an honor and a privilege to be here today. I need my, uh, my presentation up. If you guys in the back, if you could click to the sermon slide. Uh, first of all, I just want to say, man, this is... This is very strange. This is my first time preaching in a long, 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 long time. And I think it's amazing because I believe, just like that song says, as long as I live, I will continue to praise the Lord. And this, and this is the, the most the, the most optimal way to do it, literally with your mouth. I would say that my best form of communication, though, is visual communication. For those who don't know, I have a hat that says Media Victor Pro. I'm a photographer, a videographer, and as you know, a picture says a thousand words. And so for over these last few years, I've been here at Harbor Folk for approximately about, say, actually about seven years now, taking pictures, posting things on social media, showing the story of what Harbor of Hope is doing in the community. So, um, and for those of you who've been out in the community, I've been visually telling the story. This has been such a blessing to do that. And today, we're gonna to be preaching under a subject specifically that I have been praying about, thinking about, and it is under the subject of trusting the process. Uh, could you click to the next slide for me? I guess my click is not working. There it is right there. Trusting the process. And I think it's extremely important because as we think about success, I want you guys to understand this. No, there's no such thing as a secret to success, but I believe it's actually a system to success. And I believe that there's one found in Psalm chapter one. I think it's a beautiful verse. If you guys have ever read it, I'm sure you might be familiar with it. Psalms one is one of my favorite songs, I think because, well, it's very simple. It's easy to understand. And the writer says pretty much this. If you want to be successful in anything you're trying to do in life, right? Our, our sermon series is about maximizing the gifts that God has given you. And the writer in Psalms is saying this. If you trust this process, if you do this thing right here, I promise you, you'll be successful. And it's so crazy because as Christians, I think one of the things that I struggle with is having extreme confidence in systems. Systems fail us, right? We, we, we live in the world where the, where, the, where the judicial system is broken, where we have school systems that are broken, where people are doing bad things. But this system here, if you trust the Psalms one process, what I guarantee you is that you will see success in a new way. It, it comes with steps, and we're going to go through these steps in a few seconds. But it comes with steps that are guaranteed to work, but if, it only works if you work them. All right, so we're going to read the verse, Psalm chapter 1. If you don't mind standing for me in the, in the honor of the reading of the Lord, in the Lord's word, we're going to read Psalm chapter 1 on the screen, and I'll read it in your hearing. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. That's important. Verse number 3, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. It's a beautiful verse, right? Yeah. It's a beautiful verse. There are three things that I saw while reading the verse that came to me that says, if you do these three, these three things, you will be successful. I used to be a youth elder at my old church, and one of the things that I really tried to do is to make the word of God practical. I would tell the young guys, you guys free to sit down. I would tell the young, I would tell the young people, look, man, the word of God is filled with cause and effect statements. If you do these things, you will get these things. And now, I don't want to sound like a prosperity preacher, but the word of God is clear as day. If you do these three things, you will be successful. So what's the problem? Why is this a problem? I'm sorry. Why is this a solution to a problem? I, 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 out in the community, you're working with people, you're talking to people, and one of the things that people lose is hope. And what I love about the name of Harbor of Hope is that we believe in giving people hope through Christ. Amen. And this scripture here outlines a platform, a system, as I said to success. These three things are in this order. The question is, first of all, how do I get with that blessed man guy? Because the blessed man in Psalm chapter 1, I want what he has. Clearly, he's doing something right. He's like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. First thing you got to do is you have to be careful of who you invest your time with. Rule number one, you got to be careful of who you're running with. You got to be careful of who you're around. You got to be careful of where you're standing. Your environment matters, right? Step number two, you got to be careful to actually invest time in God's Word. And I use the word invest versus spend because I believe 
that studying God's word, that spending time in God's word is the best investment you can do. You will get dividends better than any stock market, better than anything else you can invest in is an investment for your life, especially during the season that you're in right now. And last but not least, I think this is clear as day in the verse, it says, you have to control what you can control. You want to stand on this side of the stage for some reason. A lot of feedback, something to get off. All right, next one, next one, next one. Somebody help me, go to the next slide for me. Go to the next slide for me. As they're, as they're doing that, we're gonna look at the first one. What I love in the first verse that's really cool is that we see a process. All right, I told you, there's a system to success, but there's also a system to failure too. Look at this right here, look. Psalm chapter one, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the godly, nor stand the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. If you notice, this man is on a path. He's walking. He's doing the right thing. And he's hanging around people who are doing wrong. Remember what I said, you gotta be careful the company you keep. He's going the wrong direction. He goes from walking to standing to sitting. There we see a downward progression. I think this is important because just like I said, there's a system to success, there's also a system to failure. We see that just like this man. He says he's blessed if he's following in the counsel of those who are going in the opposite direction of those who are going downward. People who are losing momentum. People who are going the wrong direction in life. People who are not doing what they're supposed to do, right? And just like that, I see in my own life, I have been blessed when I'm following people who are following biblical counsel. People who are lifting me up. People who are encouraging me. So he goes from walking to standing, and he's sitting. You see this picture of this guy? He looks so sad, right? But sometimes, let's just be honest, when you're going the wrong direction, sometimes it's fun, right? Sometimes you're doing the wrong things and it feels right. Sometimes you're doing the right things and it feels wrong. And sometimes you're not sad like this. Maybe you're surrounded by people who are leading you astray, right? And it's really dangerous because you'll find yourself going down from the, from the values and morals that you grew up with, from the values of society that you know is right, but you just want to do what you want to do, right? Going down, down, down. And that's why it's extremely important to be careful of the relationships that you have in your life because relationship gravity is real. I actually want to use an example. Can I get three volunteers real quick to come up here for me? We're going to illustrate something. Can I get three volunteers? Come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. We're going to illustrate something real quick. This is something that I actually saw Pastor Torres do. I'm not, I'm not even going to lie to you. I got this from Pastor Torres. We're going to illustrate relationship gravity. Go ahead and stand up here, brother. You look strong. You look, he's, going to be, he's going to be our blessed man in this example, okay? All right, come over here, come over here. I need one more person. One more person. Don't jump all at once. All right, come on up, come on up. So we're gonna illustrate this thing. It's called relationship what? Gravity. Gravity, all right? So this is gonna be our strong man. Hey, hey, come over. And these two are gonna be people leading them the wrong way, all right? I want you to try with all your might. You grab this arm, you grab that arm. I want you to try with all your might to fight against them. They're gonna pull you down, all right? Three, two, one. Oh, he's strong. He's too strong. He's too strong. He's too strong. He's too strong. All right, I want you to pretend like you're weak, though. All right, we're gonna just pretend like you're weak. You're too strong. You're too strong. Just let them take it. Let them take it. The point was, go ahead, pull him. No, 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 no. Don't fight back, brother. Don't fight back. Don't fight back, brother, brother, brother. brother. Oh, 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 just go with it. Yeah, just let them take it. Because Kill, you just too strong. I don't know. Look. Hey, look at his muscles. All right, he's gonna take old Jack. I didn't know he was that strong. But the point is. We would go into jails and, do, and we would go into jails and juvenile detention centers and we would have a higher box. We, you guys can sit down. You guys sit down. Right. We would have a higher platform. We set up some chairs and we have, you know, a guy get pulled down by the other guys. He wasn't clearly as strong as this guy. But every time, no matter what, when they were in a higher place, the guys would get yanked down. Right? It's easier to pull somebody up who's on a high place and bring them down. Yeah. Versus you trying to pull them up. In this case, he pulled both of these guys up. But that is a strong friend. Amen. Amen. Not everybody built like that. Let's just be honest. But if you are, you have to be careful because it's really dangerous to understand that you are the exception and not the rule. This thing is real, just like the law of gravity. You may not like the law of gravity, but it is real. If you are hanging around people that are going to pull you down, be careful because this thing is real. And vice versa, like I said, you may be the friend on the, on the up, trying to help your friend on the lower end, but you have to be careful as well because even though you may think you're strong, you may not be as strong as you think you are. 
Because relationship gravity is real. So like I said, the blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the godly, nor standeth the way of sinners, nor sin that seems scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Right? We're going to keep going. For he shall be like a tree. Your environment matters. Like a tree. The people who you're with. The things that you're taking in. The things that you're doing. It's, it's, somebody told me that mental is also environmental. Somebody said, think about that. Your, your mindset. Because unfortunately, you become like the five people you hang around. Unfortunately, if you got a bunch of people who are studying the word of God, who are hanging out together, if there's one guy who's a little bit weaker, he's going to start want to start getting interested in God's work. And the vice versa happens as well. So I remember doing Bible studies and working with people and there were times where, you know, you may not feel as strong about a certain thing or whatever the case may be. And you may get down, but then your brothers and sisters, they come around you and they support you, right? And that's an important thing. You need people like in your circle. That's why just like this man, he's staying in his, he's staying in his word of God, your environment matters. You got to be careful of the people around you, what they're saying to you, how they're speaking to you. Just like this plant right here is planted in this ground, planted in that ground. You are planted somewhere and God is trying to remind you today. You need to be careful of where you've planted yourself because you could be around some bad company that are leading you away from being nourished and strengthened in the things that God has in his word. I think this is extremely important if you want to be successful. So blessed is the man or the woman or the person who is careful with the people they invest the most time with because you will inevitably be like them if you are not careful because they will bring you down. That's the first point. Okay. Step number two. Step number two. It's extremely important for us to invest time in God's word. Like I said, investing in God's word is probably the most valuable thing that I've ever done as a Christian. I think it's extremely amazing how as we're going through this thing called life, God's word is more than enough. If we had nothing but the Bible, God's word is enough to be able to take care of us and to help us be successful. Psalm chapter one, verse two says, but it, but he, but sorry, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate what day and night. I love this analogy because this verse actually shares the same exact structure as Joshua chapter one. I don't know if you guys are familiar with John chapter one. Everybody in Joshua chapter one, verse eight. It says this: This book of the law shall not depart of your mouth. This is the same as that language. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. And then you shall make thy way prosperous. And then you'll have good success. In this writing, uh, we see that what's happening is, I believe, that the writer in Psalm chapter 1 is actually pointing to Joshua chapter 1 when they first were entering into the promised land. And he's saying, this is what's worked for us in the past. Run the same play. Run the same as that play. It works. It works. Don't go away from it. It may not work when you want it, but it works. Study God's word day and night, just like you would anything else in your life, right? You eat breakfast every day. I hope you do anyway. <laughs> read the Bible before you, go, before you go to breakfast, right? And read the Bible before you go to sleep. Pretty simple, right? I had a, I had a coach, he would say, Bible before breakfast. And that was something that really stuck with me. And it's something that I still do. Sometimes I actually, I ain't gonna lie to you, I'll be skipping breakfast and just read my Bible. But that's okay, you know, because everybody's in a different place. Sometimes you just gotta get to it. But if you're gonna do anything, if I had to choose between food or the Bible, I'm gonna read God's Word first. Amen. I'm gonna try to listen to something that has something to do with something spiritual because it is the most important investment. Remember what I said, investment. Because when I'm going through it, when things get tough, those words are in my heart. Those words, are, so when I'm interacting with people and there's something going crazy, I'm thinking about the last thing I listened to and I'm like, man, Lord, I know I shouldn't be thinking that. Or I'm checking myself based on what's in God's word. And it's a beautiful thing. So Bible before breakfast and Bible before bed. And if you're not taking notes, I highly recommend you take that note because that's a, that thing has helped me also. Look at Matthew chapter four. I love what Jesus said as he is in the wilderness. He's fasting. He's hungry. He didn't eat anything for 40 days. Can you imagine not eating anything for 40 days? Mm. Some of y'all can't even imagine eating enough for a week. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I'm the same way, right? But Matthew chapter 4, Jesus says this. He answered, he's speaking to the devil. He says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Jesus did Bible before breakfast too. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, 40 days is a long time before he, break his, before he broke his fast. But at the end of the day, we see that your strength, your substance, just like you eat every day, just like you shower every day, just like you bathe every day, 
You need to be in that word every day. I know we know this. We're Christians. We know this. But are we doing it? And that's the tough part, right? Just like this man. He's in his word. He will be like a tree. A tree is eating from the ground every day. Where are you rooted and grounded? The nutrients come from where the tree is planted. The nutrients come. It's, it's, an, it's so hard. I was actually researching this. So there's two different types of uh, feeding mechanisms with different organs. I know I'm getting scientific right now. But we got autotrophic creatures like trees. They will, they will consume the nutrients from the soil that's in the ground where the roots are. Right? They can't move. So they're forced to be in the environment. Like I said earlier, if you're around a toxic, let's say, let's say you're in an environment, you're a tree, and somebody dumped a bunch of toxicity around you, you can't help but consume that, right? Mm -hmm. Just like if you're a tree and you're planted in a good place, you're going to consume a whole bunch of good stuff as well. Right? And if you are a human being, and your life is rooted and grounded in the Word of God, I'm talking about Bible before breakfast. Yes. You doing your Bible studies, right? Yes. Or if you're dyslexic like me, you listen to the Bible, right? Whatever you got to do to get it in, or if you can't read, that's a tip for you as well. Listen to the Old Testament. You, you reading every single day. You eating, consuming God's word. What's going to happen is they say junk in, junk's out, right? Yeah. Good things come in, good things are going to come out. I promise you, your life is going to change. You will be successful, right? And as I think about consuming as well, when you consume and you stay rooted in God's word, you will grow. Didn't we just say that as well? I think about an old song, actually, when I was a kid, they would sing this song called, Read your Bible, pray every day. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to grow, grow, grow. Well, you're going to grow as well. And as I mentioned, just like a tree that's planted somewhere in a heterotrophic manner, human beings, we're different because we're autotrophs, meaning we can move around, we get food wherever we want. And that's dangerous because what happens is we're getting food from social media, we're getting food from this friend, we're getting food from that guy. This guy says some deep truths. And notice that the first thing that the man that's in Psalm chapter 1, how he's blessed, is because he's not taking counsel from crazy places. He's not getting his food, his, his wisdom, his nourishment from other places outside of the Word of God. This is extremely important. When I got mentored by Pastor Torres, and he was coming to me with structure and how to get better, I remember, man, I'm struggling with this, I'm coming in. He always opened the Word of God and said, what does God have to say about this verse? And that's why I love this guy, right? Also, too, if you're going to a counselor, and they're not opening the Word of God, go somewhere else. All right, I'm just saying say that because I'm Christian. But do what you got to do if they're not Christian. But if you get a chance, you study the Word of God, look for it for yourself, talk to the counselor, and then check it against the Word of God. Right? If you're getting advice from social media, if you're getting any advice from anywhere else, make sure that you're getting advice from God's word first because this is how you grow as a Christian. Mm. And this is the key to success. Run the play. I promise you work. This process, this system works if you work it. If you work. So stay rooted. Watch where your roots are. And as a result, it's going to affect how you grow in life. So the blessed man does two things. I'm going to recap. He's careful who he invests his time with or who she invests her time with. And they're also careful to invest time in God's word. Last but not least, this is an extremely important point for me. This, ver the verse also, it doesn't directly say this, but it points to the idea of controlling what you can control. We can control what we consume. We control where we plant it. Sometimes we get in situations where crazy things just happen to us, right? Think bad things happen to good people. It's unfortunate, but that's the world that we live in. But I want, you to I want you to look in the verse we're going to see here as well. Well, I believe it supports the idea of controlling what you can control. Verse 3 says this. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. What I love about that line right there in particular, that bringeth forth fruit in his season. A lot of us are in seasons and we don't know when the fruit are coming. Yeah. We're so focused on outcomes. Let's be honest. Man, I don't have this car. I don't have this girl. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have that degree. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have that. You so focused on results. You so focused on fruits. Let's be honest. And it's so easy to get caught up in what we don't have. But God says the fruit will come if you do the work. But at the end of the day, it's going to come when it comes. Oh, yeah. You control what you control. In the meantime, I'm going to keep controlling. What I can control, I'm going to get up, I'm going to study God's word, I'm going to apply God's word, and if God's word is going to come to pass, when it comes to pass. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. So I like this verse right here. So this isn't a verse, but this is a, a poem from a very common, very common uh, 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 phrase that's used in the mainstream. This is actually my screensaver, and I look at this every single day when I turn on, when I, when I go to my phone, and I look at the, uh, the alarm, it says this, God... Grant me the pre oh, sorry. Grant me the serenity, sorry, to accept the things I cannot change, and the courage 
to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. I remember the first time I saw this and I shared this with my, well, I shared this with my baby sister. And I was like, man, this is, I need this right here. This ain't in the word of God, but this is definitely inspired because so in order to have serenity and peace in your life about those things you can't control, those outcomes that you want in life, you just gotta let go and let God, man. I did my part. I'm trusting God's word. I'm doing what God's word says. The fruit's gonna come when it comes because this matters because when you learn to control just the inputs and you manage the outputs, okay, if they come, they come. It will help you with your expectations. It will help reset them because there's things that you want in life I know like I said, you want to be successful, but I believe God's word on success is a little bit different because true success is when one is rooted and grounded on God's word, regardless of the output. Amen. So if I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to do and I don't get the grade, am I a failure? No. I mean, you, you, didn't, you didn't bat, let's be honest. But I believe in God's standards because he can see our heart. He knows if we really try, right? Or if we're doing what we're supposed to do behind the scenes. Your character is being formed. Your character is being worked on. You worked hard on that. You didn't pass. You're going to try again. Okay, that's okay. We're going to try again. But that's not the point. I think a lot of times in, in life and society, I think people base success only on the outcomes. They just see what you got. And like, oh, man, that guy's successful. That guy's successful. But I believe success is the man who is working on things even when they're not working. Mm. And you still going to go after it. you still going after it. God honors that and he sees you. Because the righteous man falls, what, seven times? Yes. And gets back on the air. That's biblical. Yeah. So true success begins and continue, it, it continues when you're being rooted and grounded on the word of God regardless of the outcome. Only managing the inputs. I can't control the output, but I control, I control what I put into this thing. I'm planting myself <coughs> by the rivers of water by putting myself in God's word. And as a result, I'm going to let God handle the fruit. I'm going to let God help me to be successful. When I first came to Harbor of Hope, I did not know how to turn on a camera. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I did not know anything about what I know now. I have a whole media video business. I just control the inputs. And people pay me. It's a beautiful thing. But that it was a process. Like I just said, it's a process. I literally started off. I remember the computer crashing on me, man. I remember I made, I would edit a whole video. And computers crashed. Now I had to start all the way back over. Can't control the output, right? <laughs> Got to do it again. Got to put in the work. And I'm saying this because there's sometimes in life, or just like me, when I first started, you see me, I'm smiling on my camera. I wouldn't always smile. I was crying when that thing crashed. I just feel like all night editing the video. Now you tell me I gotta go do it again. And I gotta remember exactly where the music was, where this was, where that was. That's a headache. But in life, it's the same exact way. Because just like in my example, you can only control what you control. Sometimes tech fail. Like sometimes the audio be acting up when we be preaching here. Control what we control, right? Sometimes you have issues in life. Sometimes the bill doesn't get paid. Sometimes that person failed on you. Sometimes this person cheated on you. Sometimes this thing happens. Control what you control. And I say that when you are trusting God through that process, that's when you're truly successful. It's just trusting God through that process. Because it's not a secret to trusting God. It's just, just trust God. And through the desired process, you'll see God will continue to bring things out of you that you didn't even know was in you. I didn't know I had a whole media business inside of me. I thought I was going to be a motivational speaker. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I thought I was going to be a, a, a part of different crews where we would travel all over the country just speaking. But who knew that God could actually give me a camera and use a gift of me just constantly <laughs> pouring into it and pouring into it. And then after 10,000 hours, before you know, you don't put 10,000 hours of input into something. And then before you know it, something else is birthed out of you. Yeah. And God is so good that his word is true. But like I said, the fruit comes when it comes. The fruit comes when it comes. And sometimes... It doesn't come when you want to, but it'll come on time. Here's some of the inputs that I put on here as an example when it comes to my life, but you guys can put in inputs for your life as well, because I believe it's extremely practical. On this side, I said what? What time I wake up at and what time I go to sleep at. In fact, I think going to sleep is probably the harder part, right? Yeah. <laughs> you going to sleep will affect you waking up. All right, let's just be honest, right? Then that affects me when how, how I exercise in the morning. Because I know that I only have like a small window to get things done in the morning when things are quiet, that's when I exercise. And if I don't go to sleep, that output, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> Let's just be honest, right? It's not encouraging, it's not fun, but you got to get it done, right? Number two, how much time I, sp I spend on social media. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm not perfect. I go, through this, the, I go through doom scrolling. It's addictive. But when I manage this input right here, I'm able to get through another book. I actually have another habit. When I get up in the morning and I do my prayer walk, I actually will be listening to an audio book on something related to business or finance or 
Bye. Well, after I'm done doing my Bible before breakfast, I will also listen to a personal development book about finance, something like that. But that directly affects, because if I'm up all night, I didn't get to go to sleep because I'm up doom scrolling on social media or watching Netflix, well, let's be honest, right, or watching YouTube videos, it's hard for me to do my goal of reading one book a week because that's one of my personal goals of reading one book a week at least. And the next thing is, how many new photo and video clients I reach out to? This, this, this could work for anything else as well. If, you're, if you have a goal to reach out to a certain number of, you got to fill up the pipeline, you know what I'm saying? You're trying to get new clients in the door. It's going to directly affect you closing new sales for business for the next term that you're going in because every single quarter is business. We're trying to pay our taxes, we're trying to get things done, and we need clients, right, at the end of the day to be able to get that done. So focus on the root, not the fruit. Focus on the fruit. I'm sorry, I said that backwards. Focus on the root. Because that's what you can control. I control what I do. But if God, if it's not God's will for me to be able to exercise that more, I ain't gonna be, I ain't gonna be sad. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna, if I, or if I didn't listen to the book that week, or if I didn't close the sale, that's okay. I'm gonna try it again tomorrow, and I'm gonna keep going and going and going until God bless me. All right. So focus on the root, not the fruit. I think we get the point. Control the input, and don't focus on outputs because. It is extremely discouraging to just focus on things you can't control. If we just focus on things we couldn't control, I believe that we would enter into a victim mindset. My name is Reno Victor. I didn't choose, I didn't choose my name. God gave my family the last name Victor. And I look at my last name and I really, I really process this. If you only focus on the outputs in your life, you will become a victim. You'll be like, man, this is happening to me. Man, that person, that happened. I'm not going to be, be successful. But if you say, you know what? I can't control this. I'm going to be a victor of my situation. I'm going to take advantage by placing my life in God's word, studying this thing, acting on it. Then I'm going to be successful. And even though I'm not successful in the moment, I'm trusting the process that in God's time that I will be successful. To be victorious in Jesus. Amen. So control what you control. Don't be a victim. Be a victor. Okay. I'm looking at people in their lives who could not control the outputs of their life. Joseph can control his brother sold him into slavery. Like look at Daniel. You can't control folks hating on you at the workplace. No. Daniel, you can't control that. Mm -mm. Jesus, he couldn't control that he had all these different people around him that were plotting to kill him. Mm -hmm. And as a result, look what happened to them. This guy was thrown in prison for something he didn't do. He was actually being a faithful employee. He gets thrown in prison. Sometimes doing the right thing gets you in trouble. Sometimes building your life on God's word gets you in trouble. Sometimes being a good, faithful Christian gets you in trouble. But am I willing to still be a good Christian despite the results? That's the question. And I would say even in that moment, Joseph was successful. He started running the prison, y'all, with the same systems. I'm talking about getting that thing right. Daniel, man, one of the best administrators you can find. And still, thrown in the lion's den. Right? Jesus. King of, this, king of the world. Perfect man. No reason for him to die like a criminal on the cross. No reason. No reason to be beat like he was beaten. No reason to be taken advantage of the way he was. This is our Savior, our Lord. Jesus Christ, literally thrown on a cross to die. But focus on the roots, guys. Not the fruit. This is a tough word. This is a real tough word for those of you going through it right now. Some of us have been in any scenarios like these where he's like, man, it's not fair, God. Man, life ain't fair, man. Why does it got to happen to me? Why not you? This, your testimony of you going through these things. Look at this testimony. These are testimonies. Your test will become your testimony. So as you're going through these things, now you can go encourage someone else who's going through and say, look, you can be successful too. It may not look like what you want, but in that moment, I'm telling you, God will use that message, your message to go encourage other people who are going through it as well. Because now we know that their story didn't end right there. Even though Joseph was thrown in prison, we know that from the, he went from the prison to the palace. Amen. And then he was able to tell his story. Look, I used to be a slave, man. I used to be a prisoner. Like nobody wanted to, de nobody wanted to deal with me. But now look, I'm running the whole entire kingdom. I'm in charge. And not because I'm just this great guy, but because I trusted the process. All I control, while I was in this prison, I was trying to make things look nicer. I was trying to encourage people. I was telling them about their present and their future. And I was also being faithful to what God has called me. Daniel, he's doing the same thing. He's literally being called in a place he's not even from. And serving to the best of his ability, using his gifts in a way that brings value to the marketplace. And as a result, when he came out of that situation, he was uplifted. He was in a position of authority and power. We look at Jesus. Same thing happened to Jesus. Lifted from a low place, brought to a high place. Jesus, king of the world. 
becomes the example for us as well. Because they didn't stop there. What if they would have quit in that, in, in that situation? We wouldn't be saved. We wouldn't be saved right now. And we praise God because this is a part of the growing pains that we have to go through. I like to, say, I like to say this to myself. You're free to write it down and use it as well. If something is not working, then it's either working on me or it's working in me. I'm not going to focus on the results. Let's say something's not working out. It's working on me. This situation is working on me. And I believe just like God's word says, it's working for me. Even though I don't even understand what's going on. I'm going to trust and believe God's process. Just like this, the, the verse in Psalms 1 says, Blessed is the man, for when he's planted in this situation, the fruit will come. I don't know when it will come, but I know God is working on me. What I love about this is that when we look at the gestation period of, of I'm saying gestation, Lord, I'm, I'm looking at the plant, the plant period of growth, right? We look at this thing right here. We don't know how long it's going to take for this, whatever kind of seed it is, to become what it's going to be. And when I worked on a farm, which is so crazy, we worked on a farm, we would take manure and put it on top of the seeds. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you who don't know, manure is a, is a, it means poop, all right? Yeah. <laughs> it means crap, let's be honest. <laughs> Some of y'all gotta go through a whole bunch of crap yeah. Come on now. to get your growth. Yeah. Just like I told you, it's a part of the process. Yeah. It's a part of your growth. And I think we really look down on the seed, but we don't realize this guy has to push through total darkness. He don't know what the future holds. He just, he just pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. Rooted in the right place. You in the right place. You in the right space. You know what you're supposed to do. Keep going. Keep going. Don't get weary doing good because in due season, yeah. you're going to become a tree. Yeah. And you're going to have fruit. Yeah. But focus on your roots right now. Focus on the things that people can't see. We can't see. Right now, we got a 3D picture on the screen right now. But we cannot see what's happening in each and every single one of your hearts right now. And the Holy Spirit knows where you are. The Holy Spirit is working with you. He's growing on you. He's working on you so that you can be able, as you're in the, the, the darkness of your life, as you're working in a season where you don't know what the future holds, but I know it holds the future. God's word is sure. God's word is, it keeps me confident that despite the darkness that I'm in, I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I don't know what fruit I'm going to become. I don't know who I'm going to become, but I know God is with me, even in this dark place. And when I think about the life of Jesus, too, I'm thinking about Jesus in the same way. He literally was in the ground for three days. And comes back up, right? Just like a seed. Comes up and saves us all and becomes, takes his rightful place as king of the world. Takes it back from the enemy who wanted to destroy us. But he had to go through that process. And that's why, as Christians, we're called to go through the same exact thing as well. So, just like we said, this is a process. This is a system to success, not a secret to success. Blessed is the person who does these three things. You're careful in the people you hang out with. The people you invest your time in. You're careful in investing time in God's word. And you control only what you can control. So the appeal is this. It's a very simple appeal. If you want to be like the person and the tree found in Psalms chapter 1. Feel free to play some music for me, brother. If you want to be like the person and the tree in Psalms chapter 1. I want you to stand up with me. Stand up with me. If you want to be like the person and the tree in Psalms chapter 1. The writer in Psalm says, run this play. It works. It may not work when you want, but it'll work when it works. Don't focus on the outcome, right? If you want to be like the man that's blessed, right? You say, you say, you say, I want to be like that man. Everybody stood up. Amen. Appeal number two. I want to be careful of who I invest my time with. Hallelujah. Some people got to go, guys. That's right. It's unfortunate. And some people... We're thinking about the church folks here. We got some wonderful church people here. They want to be able to show you the principles in God's word here. We're actually going to be having different types of small group opportunities here. People are having great meetings about life and you can do life with them. They want to spend time with you because we know that we become like the five people we hang around. So if I'm hanging around Brother Paul right here, Brother Paul's an awesome guy. I'll become more like Brother Paul. And vice versa. I'm going to learn stuff from him. He's going to give me wisdom. And I'm going to give him my strength and my energy. I don't know what I'm going to bring to the table. But spending time with people that are awesome. That's the key, right? And not hanging around with people that are bringing us down. Let's be honest, right? Hallelujah. Number three. I want to be more careful to invest my time in God's word. Amen. We're, we're, we're going to be having the new disciples makers Bible class. They're going to be doing Bible studies. We have Bible studies after church. Don't take that for granted. Not everybody has that. Not everybody has that. And when you're on your own, 
Spend time in God's word. That's the appeal as well. And last but not least, this is the biggest one, I believe. Control what you control. We all going through different stuff, man. I'm not going to pretend like I had a perfect life. I remember growing up, man, and my parents got divorced when I was very young, and then we were living in a house with a lot of issues, and I just remember just feeling, I remember we were struggling in school, parents were struggling at home. I remember just feeling like an outlaw, feeling sad, feeling alone. But when I put my trust in God's word, man, and I said, I'm going to take this God thing seriously. I ain't going to let none of these crazy people doing the wrong thing around me take me down. Man. And I'm going to be successful. Hallelujah. I don't know when I'm going to be. I don't know what it looks like. But I'm going to control what I can control right now. And then coming to Harbor Vogue and running that same play here, it's been a blessing seeing the lives of people changing and getting baptized and working with people. It's been such a blessing. And I'm just grateful to be here today with you all. So we're going to pray. And I just challenge you guys to trust the process found in Psalms, number, Psalms chapter 1. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so grateful for your word. We're so grateful for the reminder that you've given us. That God, you are in control. I don't know why you allow bad things to happen to good people. I don't know why you allow for certain things to happen. For us to be in situations where we wonder, God, are you even real? Are you here with me right now? But there's someone in the audience right now who is suffering who's going through it. They've been trying for years and years and years to be a better Christian. They're reading their Bible, but they're not seeing the results that they want in their life, God. I am praying right now, God, that you give them peace. That, God, this is a part of the growing pain. This is a part of the growing process. That though they may deviate from God's word, that, God, you're calling them to come back. You're questioning. You're, you're, you're asking, son, daughter, where are you? I love you. Trust the process. I know you're in a dark place right now. I know you don't know what the future holds, but I got you. I see you in the ground. I'm working on you. I'm working in you. Don't worry. And I love you. And everybody underneath the sound of my voice, Lord, I pray to you bless every single home, bless every single situation. God, you know the seeds that are planted in every single person's heart right now. And my prayer, Lord, is that you bless every single person that they become like that tree planted by the rivers of water. That when the storms come, that when the winds break, that they stay strong and that their roots are grounded in Jesus Christ. God, we love you and we thank you for this reminder in your word. And we love you because we know that your word will come to pass. And even if we don't see it in our lifetime, Lord, even if you answer that prayer in heaven, Lord, I know that you will raise us up when it comes for you to come back and bring us to your place in heaven where we'll have peace for all eternity. And so, God, give us that peace today. Give us that hope today in you, Lord. We thank you. We praise you in advance for the victories that will come because of us trusting you and trusting the process. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I just don't, I, I, I thank you so much. Really, I'm for the word. I, um, I have